Good day. This is John Valenti, the Director of Athletics for Harbor Fields. I want to just welcome you to this brief uh, video and PowerPoint that I put together uh, that will help uh, you as parents and if your student athletes wish to uh, review it as well, um, I certainly encourage them to do so. Uh, a few caveats or disclaimers ahead of time. Um, I'm not usually comfortable in this kind of platform of, of doing uh, a video that's recorded and also showing a PowerPoint at the same time. Uh, but you really don't want to look at me and probably listen to me. So I'm going to give you some explanations about all of these PowerPoint slides as best as I can. Um, and so you can take whatever information that you gather. Unfortunately, obviously in this format, you can't ask me questions because you know, it's a recording, but certainly I'm available to take any calls that you may have at my office, or you can email me over the weekend and I'll be certain to, um, you know, to get back to you. Um, so we, as you know, on February 1st, uh, Suffolk County uh, Executive Ballone, uh, along with the Commissioner of uh, Department of Health Services, gave the green light and authorization for high-risk sports to return to play. Uh, there were certain stipulations, of course, that we needed to follow in terms of the guidelines, the safety protocols, things of that nature. But the big one, obviously, was um, as athletes needed to be tested once a week. And we're uh, going to start doing that on Monday afternoon, right after school. Uh, I'm setting up a schedule to have each team come in uh, to the uh, school cafeteria, and they will be tested, uh, in, you know, for COVID. And I'll get into that a little bit, uh, you know, explain it a little bit more in detail. So I'm just going to again, uh, what are we doing at Harbor Fields to again ensure the safety of our student athletes? Well, uh, we have been doing this for a long time, probably not only in school, but obviously for those sports that have been uh, going on since uh, January. But we're obviously reinforcing hygiene, uh, sanitizing equipment. Uh, we are not allowing any use of our locker room. That's uh, because it's it's virtually impossible to be able to sanitize that given the number of students that would be going in and out. Uh, coaches are being issued digital uh, temperature screening uh, thermometers. So they are taking the athletes temperatures prior to practice. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, there'll be COVID testing weekly. We are clearly mandating uh, masks at all times. That is not open to um, debate. We here at Harbor Fields, in fact, will be a little bit more restrictive uh, than, than uh, what they call for. Uh, some places have decided that the athletes can take their masks off uh, when they're not actually, um, you know, when, when they're doing some physical exertion. However, we have uh, mandated those masks to hopefully prevent any form of, of COVID. Uh, we're taking breaks. Coaches are offering breaks during practices to, again, reinforce washing hands, using hand sanitizers. Uh, you know, coaches are obviously keeping, maintaining logs uh, in case we need to contact trace what time an athlete gets there, what time they leave, who they were with. Uh, that's, again, if, if need be, we have to contact tracing. Uh, in the wrestling room, in the gyms, we are keeping uh, some, some doors open in the back to increase our ventilation, uh, windows in the wrestling room. Uh, so far, it you know, has worked out pretty well. No one's practicing in, in 30 degree temperatures because of that, but I, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do, obviously, for ventilation purposes. Of course, like when we have basketball games and actually wrestling matches, uh, we'll be responsible to place the player chairs, which they normally sit on, um, you, know, uh, you know, on the gym for basketball. They'll be about six feet apart. And that should be interesting to see all that how it goes. And of course, only players, coaches, essential workers, uh, which are like the school board operators, will be permitted in the gym uh, during contests. Uh, we have also uh, given the coaches a template on how to assign uh, seating on the buses to away contests, just again to ensure distancing. And we're, of course, having them um, wear their masks on the bus, and we'll have the windows open also to increase uh, ventilation and circulation. So I put together a, a few Q and A's and I'll, I'll say that some of this is gonna be redundant as I go on, uh, but I thought it, it would be in different formats. So if you needed to leave the meeting, uh, this, you know, this recording and do something else that you would get at least the salient points. So the question is, will there be mandatory testing of high risk athletes? And that answer of course is yes. The Suffolk County Department of Health will be taking care of the fee for those tests. They are free. Um, and you know, again, we'll be starting to issue them on Monday. Um, coaches will also be coached. The nurses will be doing the testing. Uh, this They have been receiving training on how to um, administer the COVID rapid tests. 
and they are confident and capable and, and more importantly, um, willing and able to do this for our athletes. Uh, and I can't thank them enough for their involvement. So uh, you certainly um, know that your, your children are in safe hands. You can, if you choose to have a COVID test uh, done on your uh, child, if you choose to outside of the school district. So if say this weekend you decide to want to take them for a COVID test, um, you know, you can then have your child bring in the test on Monday, issue it to the nurse, and uh, that would be acceptable. So we're not mandating it has to be at the school. We are providing it. Um, if you don't have it, we have certainly will give it. But if you choose to want to uh, have the test um, outside it, you certainly can. Uh, of course, test temperatures will be taken. Uh, they are taken before practice and games. Uh, I mentioned coaches have digital uh, thermometers, the attestation form, which the students have been doing regularly uh, prior to coming into the building for student attendance, uh, you know, basically is attesting to the fact that they haven't been around somebody with COVID, they're not having symptoms of COVID. Uh, they are actually on, on a Google uh, format. So uh, we accept hard copies, but many of them are doing it digitally. Of course, masks, as we mentioned, they are um, going to be required. Again, locker rooms will not be available uh, here at Harbor Fields for our teams and our visiting teams. And the same would be true when we go away to other schools. It's just very difficult to maintain the hygiene and the adequate uh, sanitation and disinfecting. Uh, can we share water bottles? No, in fact, the athletes will be responsible for their own water needs. If they wanna bring Gatorade and leave it on the bench, they wanna bring bottles of water, that's fine. Again, due to sanitary issues, um, we will not have jugs of water available both for our players and the visitors. Uh, that again, go coincides with some of the COVID uh, CDC recommendations. Sharing of equipment, uh, we try to keep it to a minimum. Um, we, are, we are all uh, being very cognizant of making sure the equipment is wiped down, whether it's basketballs, wrestling mats, we're doing our due diligence to keep up with this as much as possible to make our environment as uh, you know, COVID free as we possibly can. Um, is it required to complete the champions to play form? Yes, I'll actually show you that picture in a few moments of the, of the form. Most of our players, I believe, have already filled it out digitally, um, but, but again, it, the forms were put on uh, Google, and that was a form that was created by um, the uh, Suffolk County uh, Executive Balloons Office, and I'll explain a little bit more. Is there a limit of total participants? Yes, as you can see, all of the teams were only uh, 20 members, which includes coaches and players, were permitted. So most of our teams, um, looking at those numbers, are less than the 20. Here's the champion of uh, the uh, champion of community pledge. Uh, this was established again, so our athletes would sign this and willingly and able want to practice good, healthy habits both here in school and in the community. It's kind of um, they are they are privileged to be able to do this after, of course, losing out and so much time in playing these sports. And even though there's a short um, season left, three weeks. We want them to uphold, obviously, to, to lead by example in school and outside of the school setting in order to maintain all the things that they need to do to keep us uh, COVID free so we can maintain these sports going on not only now, but until June. So big question about spectators. I've received numerous emails and phone calls, and I understand that uh, this is a hot potato issue. And um, let me just say that I understand and I respect where everyone is coming from. I'm kind of not happy that it was decided that uh, there was not going to be spectators allowed. Uh, the facts of the facts are months ago, even prior to this season, it was decided by a number of groups uh, through a lot of input and information gathering uh, that we were not going to allow any spectators to contest. Uh, we, we were trying to roll out the school year with as, as limited number of, of uh, persons coming into the buildings and our school grounds. And uh, when the decision came to have these indoor sports start up, it was also determined that due to the fact that it's indoors, a closer, uh, a, a close uh, space with with uh, with people, that that was not going to be allowed. And just to let you know that this was not made, in, this decision wasn't made in a vacuum. Uh, there was again a lot of groups: uh, Department of Health, Health Services, Suffolk County uh, Department of Health, um, the CDC, uh, Center of uh, Disease, Con uh, Disease Control, School Superintendents Associations, Principal Associations, Section 11 Athletic Directors, uh, the Section 11 Executive Board. Uh, Section 11 Athletic Council and Section 11 Safety Committee. So uh, again, there was a lot of um, input and a lot of research going back and forth. And ultimately it was decided that let's get the kids to play. Um, 
we we understand we want spectators too. Uh, you know, I certainly would love to have a gym packed, but right now we are still in a pandemic. We still have a, a kind of a high rate here in Suffolk County as compared to the rest of the state. So we want to really maintain some kind of a control in order to um, have an environment that is clean, sanitized, and would avoid any situations that may come up that involve an extensive contact tracing because maybe a parent uh, from our, our district or somebody else from another district uh, would come in and if they had COVID, they didn't know it, we know the potential of, of those uh, domino effects. Uh, we will, thanks to our Tornadoes News team, and I can't thank Mr. Ambrosio, along with our wonderful students that are part of that, uh, who have always done, uh, have been, been available to live stream most of our contests. They are on board to um, live stream uh, most, if not all of our varsity contests, and we are in the process of making arrangements for them to also do JV contests. Uh, the limitations, though, is, of course, the equipment and the number of students that are available to um, to do this live streaming for all the contests. There's a lot. Uh, between now and the end of February, uh, there's at least three to four games a week, both JV and varsity. Uh, so there's um, there's a lot there. They, we're going to do the best we can. If, if the uh, Tornadoes news crew cannot tape, we're trying to have other students come along to be able to do it uh, through a, a iPad or, or some kind of a other uh, platform means. Also, uh, I've been told that other athletic directors uh, in other school districts are also providing live stream services. Some of them have used a different format that they have all run into problems with. That's another blessing that we have, that we have our Tornadoes news crew. They're trying to get the kinks out so that um, when we're away, you will also have access to those links and you could be assured that we'll provide you with all of that information ahead of time so that if we're playing at West Hampton or, you know, or another school district, uh, at least a day or two before, I will get that information. The coaches will get that information. We'll actually post it on our uh, website to, for you to then be able to watch these games uh, from your homes or, or your offices. So I'm going to go into a little bit of the COVID testing. This is the actual test. Um, you don't need to know all of this, uh, just I'm giving you a roundabout this, otherwise it would be uh, three hours long. Um, so there's gonna be various stations that are set up in the cafeteria on Monday. One will be a welcome and check-in. And of course we will um, first and foremost take the student athletes temperatures. Uh, the student athletes will be given a pre-test uh, screening questionnaire. And the attestations are again completed daily. As I mentioned before, uh, we have uh, these um, test re registration forms in various languages. Um, so that's, I'm going to show you what the pre-test uh, uh, screening questions are. I took a picture of that form. Uh, the nurses, again, would be doing the uh, swabbing. So they are going to be responsible for the swab, the five circles inside the tip of the nostril. They collect the sample. The sample then goes on a test card. And um, there's a kit that I picked up from the Suffolk County Department of Health that provide that. And um, once the swabbing is completed, the um, swab goes on the test kit and the students have to wait for 15 minutes. It's timed at the 15 minute mark. Um, they um, are told whether they're negative or positive. Obviously, if they're negative, they're good to go. Um, we are responsible to uh, input some data to a state website that you don't really need to know. Um, but you can just see what the process is about uh, closing the card, waiting 15 minutes. Again, the nurses, as I mentioned, are trained in this. They are well-versed in this. Um, we have great nurses here that will be conducting uh, these tests. Uh, and um, again, after the, uh, the students have received the test, we will uh, distance them in the cafeteria for the 15 minutes until we can determine what the results of that test is. If an invalid test result comes back, we then will issue a new swab test. We'll actually redo the test. Uh, here, if the valid, um, if there was valid results, there's either gonna be two um, end results here, a positive individual or a negative individual. Um, if the student tested positive, then we're gonna isolate them. We're gonna begin our regular COVID symptom protocols. We'll contact you and our staff uh, and probably obviously clearly send you home <clears throat> so we can begin contact tracing, which we've been doing regularly during the course of the school day. And also you've been receiving emails from the district at night informing you of either students or staff that had been uh, positively uh, diagnosed with COVID and, and the steps that were taken in order to have students be able to return to school. 
And of course, the negative individual will inform them of their result and um, they will then be released. Okay, so um, this that the uh, ECLRS data input that that again is our responsibility to input uh, the results of those tests and send them to a state website. Uh, again, these are just some things again being repetitive. Will there be mandatory testing of athletes? Yes, uh, that not only the athletes, but the students, I mean, the coaches will as well. <clears throat> on a weekly basis for those particular sports. And they also mention uh, when we get into the other seasons for the fall season, football and volleyball, we'll be responsible for the same testing. And of course, in the spring, uh, girls and boys lacrosse. I don't know why girls have to say here, but this will have to be done prior to the first competition. I mentioned if a parent or guardian chooses to have their child tested at another facility, you certainly can do that. However, it needs to be done following our um, once a week regiment. So on Monday, we will be testing. We're looking to test either the Saturday or the following Tuesday, because the Monday, the 15th is President's Day. And uh, we're also thinking about possibly doing some of this testing during the school day. We will have an extra nurse come in and students on their either lunch or uh, phys ed class, they'd be coming to the nurse's office to get that test. We're working out those details. Uh, if a test, uh, if an athlete did test positive previously, do they need to test again after their mandatory isolation and before returning to play. According to the information that we received from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services, students who tested positive previously do not need to be tested until 30 days after their positive test. So just keep that in mind. We'll be able to work that out because we have records of who tested positive here during the school day and, and, and past, obviously, we have a database on that. Um, what staff members are authorized, as I mentioned, only certified staff. Uh, these are our nurses that will be basically doing this. Um, we're just not taking a teacher or, or a coach, obviously, and, and giving them the testing kit and saying, go test our athletes. Obviously, we're going to be more understanding of, of um, you know, making sure we're, we're doing this properly. Um, what would be requirements for contact tracing and quarantine? Again, the same thing. If we do have a, a, a positive case, we'll be responsible to have to contact trace. It may be, of course, going into the team. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios that I've been thinking about and staying up at night about. Um, what if somebody tests positive at another facility uh, or an, an opponent has tested positive? What kind of quarantine does our teams have to do? There's just too many um, of these scenarios to actually go into and have the answers for. So we'll take them one at a time. And I'm sure you may have questions as well. Thank God we have a great uh, school district physician, Dr. Gefkin, who is, uh, I have his number on literally speed dial and there's a lot of questions I give him each day. He's well versed in this as a medical uh, doctor and he readily gives me answers. So there's nothing that we're going to tell somebody erroneously. If I or the coaches or an administrator do not have the answers, we will find out and give you the proper answer um, before just giving you something that we don't really know about, okay? Um, will one case on a sports team require the whole team to quarantine? Um, again, that'll determine um, to which participants on either team will need to be quarantined as well as coordinate with your opposing district team as necessary. So that's something that I would be responsible for. And we hope that that's not gonna happen because something like that could obviously derail a week or two or even the rest of the season if we needed to uh, quarantine. This uh, is a form that's on Google, and we will not be able to test any of the student athletes until we've received this form. Um, the coaches are going to be given this today. It's Friday as I'm, I'm, I'm recording this uh, to give to the athletes. So they come on Monday with, um, you know, legal guardian or parent needs to sign this that authorizes um, the school to be able to conduct the testing, the COVID testing. This is the registration that I alluded to before. Uh, the students will, will fill this out prior to being tested. Uh, just the top part, we get their name, their address, um, things of that nature. And then of course, uh, the responsibility below is, is for the nurses and uh, the administers to take care of uh, providing that information. So uh, that's all I'm going to discuss as of, as of now. Um, I please encourage you to uh, speak to your child, your student athletes, as the coaches have, so that they understand the process and, of course, the importance of in, in the community and when they're together during the weekend to be wearing masks and, and practicing all of the guidelines and protocols um, because there's a very short window to get the season in and one or two cases due to uh, somebody not doing what they really should have done can infect a whole bunch of people and hence that could close things down. So we're encouraged. We're excited about 
uh, our athletes having these opportunities. I do understand your angst and um, your being upset about the spectators. Please understand again that we're doing this as best as we can um, in the health and safety of everybody considered. As you know, as educators, we, we were thrown into this. Um, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical expert. As an AD, I, I've done things in the last three months that I never thought I'd be having to do. And of course now add to it COVID testing and it's been really crazy. So um, please just give us some, um, some chance, trust that what we're doing is again, is in the best interest of your child. And uh, we're going to try to do it the best we can. We're on, we're sailing on uncharted waters here. Uh, because it's so new, uh, we're not alone. Every school district's going through the same, um, you know, in, in, uh, issues that, that we are. Uh, we're trust trying to do it right and get our kids to, as I said, get them out, get them play so they can make some memories of this year. So I wish you all a great weekend. I wish you all a, a good Super Bowl uh, Monday. Again, I'll be in the office if you need to call me, 754-5375, or you can certainly email me over the weekend with any questions that you may have. So uh, thanks again. You have a wonderful um, weekend. And I just want to, again, thank you for your cooperation, your support, and to let you know that uh, your children have been fantastic since we've started this up um, on, on uh, Wednesday. It's been a short week, and uh, they've been very cooperative. And to watch them out there uh, competing already and practicing is really something great. So thanks for your time, and uh, we'll catch up to you at the games. Actually, not at the games. We'll catch up to you on the video.